Um, welcome everybody. It is the third episode of Artsy Tales, and this is driving me nuts. Get away from my face, please. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Um, okay, so if you hear any noise in the background, I apologize. Um, I probably need to figure out a better way to soundproof my room because even the slightest, like somebody's watching TV next door or laughing or walking around or moving their furniture, it comes up in the mic. Um, I also apologize for the really annoying humming noise that you might hear in the background. It is my computer. My computer has been very loud lately. I think um, I need to, I don't know what I need to do, but I need to upgrade something because it's using way too much power to do really simple things. So yeah, um, anywho, so this episode, I actually have a disclaimer and um, I know that Previously, uh, <clears throat> I have stated that Artsy Tales is for everybody, and I wanted it to be family-friendly with non-explicit content, and that still holds true. However, um, this particular story does have themes of death, and the picture that I'm going to draw does have blood in it. So I apologize if that is something that you or whoever's with you does not want to watch or does not want to uh, listen to, that is totally fine. I understand. Um, I am going to do my very best to limit these sorts of episodes, but I like to still share these kinds of stories because um, even though it has those sort of themes in it, I always give it a happy ending and it's, I think it's good to talk about and think about those things. So yeah, so here we go. Um, today's story is called Belle and the Death Flower. Oh, but before we begin, I have to do the intro. So um, go ahead and do the intro. Okay, here we go. Once again, this story is called Belle and the Death Flower. <clears throat> a long time ago, in a mystical stone castle cloaked with flowered vines. Oh, oh no, I didn't open my book of wonders. Rewind. All right, I gotta get out my book of wonders here. So, background story of the Book of Wonders, it was created by my mother, she loves to scrapbook, and she filled it with all these sorts of cool stuff, like quotes like that, and she like does beading, and I don't know, it's pretty amazing, it's not anything I would be able to do, to be honest, I don't think I'd have the patience for it, so yeah, I have this binder, alright, so anyway, Opening up the Book of Wonders. Da -da 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 -da. Oops, I bumped the mic. All right. Book of Wonders is open. And here we go. <clears throat> Belle and the Death Flower. Author Hat, which is me. A long time ago, in a mystical stone castle cloaked with flowered vines, dwelled Diamond, the Mushroom Queen. She was widowed and lived only with her dearest daughter, Belle. These two royal shrooms were both part of the sacred Amanita family, which were considered the most dignified of the mushroom people. Perhaps it was their stunning red capes and ruffled collars, or their tall and towering stems, which gave them such admiration. Belle had a very strict schedule of studies and classes, in which her tutor, Mr. Russ, a Rasula mushroom with a whimsical cap, 
would teach her various knowledge needed for royal mushrooms. These subjects included the process of decay in wood, different types of soil, as well as the dangers of the death flower, which would sometimes wreak havoc upon the surrounding forest. These death flowers, which were a type of mushroom, by the way, would cleverly disguise themselves as flowers and like a vampire, suck the life out of other plants. Mr. Russ would also tutor Belle in the Royal Mushroom Prance, a beautiful, elegant dance that stirred up pollen and seeds in the ground. This ceremonial dance was performed by all mushrooms during the Spring Festival. Not only mushrooms would gather at this time, but the Princess of the Elves herself. She would dance among the mushroom people while playing her wooden flute. Her song would ring through the trees and signal the fairies to blow the wind so that the seeds would spread far and wide. It was the day the spring blooper. <laughs> it was the day of the spring festival and Belle went out to pra uh, no. <clears throat> It was the day before the spring festival and Belle went out to practice her royal mushroom prance on her own. She had never met an elf before and wanted to represent her people well when she danced tomorrow. Despite her nervousness, she was a natural. She whirled and twirled and glided gracefully around like, uh, whoops. Okay, let's redo that sentence. <clears throat> Despite Belle's nervousness, she was a natural. She whirled, twirled, and glided gracefully around the little... Uh, I messed it up again. We're fine. You know what? I think I need some coffee. That's, that's what I need. Okay. I think I'm ready. I can do this. I have faith in myself. Despite Belle's nervousness, she was a natural. She whirled, twirled, and glided glace Apparently not. Okay. Despite Belle's nervousness, she was a natural. She whirled, twirled, and glided gracefully around as little gold seedlings would float up from the ground and move around her. Belle became lost with a ceremonial prance and happily danced alone until sunset. A cold breeze nipped at her nose, and Belle stood still. She lifted her head and saw the once warm yellow sun fading into the hills. Oh dear, she squeaked. I have lost track of time. I must get back to the castle before dark or the queen will worry, she said to herself, and quickly started along the path home. However, she had danced quite a ways into the forest without realizing it, and the more she walked, the more she understood she would not reach the castle before dark. How foolish I've been! I'm not- blip, 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 blip. <laughs> How foolish I've been! If I'm not careful, I'll easily be lost in the darkness! She whispered in fear. That wasn't a whisper, but let's just pretend it was. The forest looked very different after the light had disappeared. It sounded different as well. There were strange cracks, thumps, creaks, moans, and the pitter-patter of insect feet scurrying about the leaves. Belle became very afraid and quickened her pace. She was careful not to make much sound, as she did not wish to draw attention to herself. It was then she noticed the path she was following had become difficult to navigate. It was covered in roots and weeds. Have I taken a wrong turn? She thought. The poor princess could barely see her hands in front of her and tripped over a rock. Uh, lost my place. Okay. <laughs> the prince, the poor princess could barely see her hands in front of her and tripped over a rock. Oh. 
a sharp pain stabbed her knee and she let out a cry. Ah! Her leg had landed on a sharp thorn and it had pierced her skin. She tried to stand back up, but couldn't. I'm injured and I cannot stand. What will I do? She cried. Her body shivered from the frigid air. Should I call for help? What if something scary hears me? Belle thought as tears dripped down her cheeks. Just as Belle began to lose hope, a soft white light glowed in the distance. The light shined brighter as, it, as its source drew near. She looked up. Uh, poop. <laughs> the, li the light shined brighter as its source drew near. Belle looked up, hoping it may be a fairy, but her heart quickly sank when she saw not a fairy, but a death flower walking towards her. She screamed and did her best to crawl away. <gasps> but sadly, the ground was too thick with weeds and roots for her to do anything. I'm going to die, she thought, while staring wide-eyed over her shoulder. <clears throat> do you need help? The death flower, uh, poop. <laughs> Messed up again. <clears throat> Do you need help? A gentlemanly voice escaped the death flower's lips. It was a voice Belle did not expect to come from such a terrifying mushroom. No, 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 leave me alone, Belle protested. I see, the death flower replied and walked past her. The bright light dimmed as he moved away. I'll simply wait until morning. I'm certain the Queen and Mr. Russ will send rescue. Oh no, the Spring Festival. How will I dance if I can't use my leg? Belle cried. She had wanted to meet an elf and dance with her people, but it seemed that her poor measurement of time had foiled her plans. The ground began to shake as the muffled sound of hooves boomed ahead. Belle felt a knot form within her throat. Perhaps a horde of unicorns? If it is, I may be saved, as unicorns are friends to mushrooms. Belle nervously smiled. She tried to reassure herself that the sound approaching was good, but once again, her hopes were dashed as she saw large, fat shadows with long white tusks barreling over bushes and branches. It was not unicorns, but wild boar. I'm doomed, Belle screamed. So you do need help, a familiar voice asked behind her. Belle turned to see the death flower standing over her. Please save me. I'll promise I reward the <laughs> third blooper. Okay. <clears throat> Belle turned to see the death flower standing over her. Please save me. I promise I'll reward you well, Belle begged. She hardly could believe her words. Certainly, the death flower replied and threw her over his shoulder. He quickly leaped from root to root and off the path. The stampede of boar rushed past them. Their meaty hooves broke everything in their path. The death flower and Belle watched as the threat raced away into the night. Why did you save me? Belle asked in disbelief. Never had she imagined the mushroom known to be a cold-blooded killer would instead save her life. Why wouldn't I? Isn't that the right thing to do? He replied. Well, yes, but you're a, a, a death flower. The most dangerous of mushrooms in the entire forest. Your kind does nothing but drain the life out of others. Belle argued. Are you... Uh, blah, blah, boop. Belle argued. Where did you hear that? I've never heard of such a horrible thing. He argued. Uh, <clears throat> Are you claiming that what I've said is untrue? Of course, it's utter nonsense. It may be true that we do consume minerals, Lise. 
I just need a moment, okay? It's, it's fine, don't, don't worry about me. That's all good. Okay, um... Are you claiming that what I've said is untrue? Belle asked. Of course. It's utter nonsense. It may be true that we do consume minerals released by other pra parasitic fungi, but we never kill anything. He explained. If it is untrue, then why has it been written for generations that death flowers do so? <laughs> because people will pick the easiest conclusion to explain the tragedy of death, even if it's not true, he replied. He then lowered the, s the silent and confused bell down and pulled the thorn out of her knee. He then placed his hand over the wound and it was healed. Ha! You, you healed my leg! Belle touched her knee where the thorn had been and didn't feel a scratch nor a pinch of discomfort. We have the ability to draw out death from other mushrooms. Our main source of food is the byproduct of death when a parasite feeds on another plant. So, we are found near dying plants. That is why it is rumored that we drain life out of others. When in reality, it's not us at all. However, to most, it is no matter, as we still rely on parasitic species to survive. And yet, that is the balance of the forest. Everyone has a role and purpose which allows us all to exist. He gazed up at the stars while he spoke. Forgive me, I was deceived. Belle bowed before him, her eyes filled with guilt. It's no matter. Most mushrooms still fear us even after knowing the truth. It seems to be ingrained within you, he frowned. Belle rose to her feet. She wished to help him as he did her, for it was because of him that she would dance in the festival tomorrow, as she had hoped. Please, may I have your name, she asked. Ivy, and you? He asked in return. Belle, she smiled. Her face was still red from crying. Uh, Ivy, I would be honored if you would dance with your mushroom brethren for the spring festival. Belle pleaded with her hands clasped together. Ivy stepped back in surprise. He was unclear whether Belle was mocking him or if she was being genuine. His kind was feared and shunned by other mushrooms, and he was unable to imagine them allowing him to dance. Okay, um, that's not possible. I would be chased away. Ivy insisted and crossed his arms. He turned away in frustration. I will be certain you won't. You are my rescuer, and I shall not allow you to be driven away, nor your people. I will make it my duty as princess to re-educate others. I will tell them what you have done for me, and reassure them that the teachings of old are born from cruelty and fear. Belle vowed with her hand over her heart. Princess? Ivy's mouth dropped open in awe. He did not realize he had rescued royalty. A glimmer of hope for him and his people rose within his chest. He gave a gentle bow, and then with his chin held high, he replied, To rid the kingdom of its prejudice, I shall accept your invitation. From this day forward, I am your friend. Then we must hurry, Belle grabbed his hand. Please guide us with your light to the castle, she asked with a smile. When, when they had reached the castle, Belle and Ivy were met by the Queen, Diamond, and Mr. Russ. My dear princess, wherever have you been? Has this terrifying creature kidnapped you? The Queen drew her sword and pointed it at Ivy's face. No, my Queen, he's my savior. Please do not harm him. I had fallen and became injured. I would have been trampled by a pack of wild boar if he had not saved me. He also miraculously healed my leg, which had been stabbed by a thorn. Belle shielded Ivy, 
with her back against him. The queen at first was dumbfounded and froze. She glared down at Ivy, who did not move nor speak. How could I believe such a lie? Do you threaten my daughter to say those words? The queen gritted her teeth in anger. Her sword was still pointed towards his face. No, my queen, it is true. I would have never found my way back to the castle without his light. I was the one who brought him here. I have learned many things through my peril. What we know of death flowers is not true. Please let us inside and allow me to explain. Belle dropped to her knees and bowed before the queen. Astounded by the sight of the princess bowing in such a humble manner, the queen sheathed her sword. It took a while, but eventually Ivy and Belle were led inside, and they all sat down to talk. They spoke of the events in the forest which had transpired, and of what Ivy had taught Belle. At first, the queen stared at the two of them in silence. It was apparent she was having difficulty understanding everything that was being told. After a lengthy stillness, she rose from her seat. You may dance with us. However, it may be a challenge for me to convince my people to accept this new information you have brought. Yet, I will make certain that all goes as planned for the Spring Festival and that you are treated as one of us. The Queen then dipped her head in thanks before retiring to her chamber. The following day, the Spring Festival began. Yet before the mushroom people headed out to begin the mushroom prance, the Queen Diamond made an announcement. <clears throat> I need my coffee for this because this is a speech. <clears throat> my daughter, Princess Belle, found herself lost in the forest late in the night. After losing her path home, she stumbled upon a thorn and pierced her knee. She could not move and was stranded in the dark cold. In addition to this, Princess Belle was right in the way of a wild boar stampede. My daughter would have been trampled to her death if not for the bravery and kindness of a death flower. This death flower swooped in and carried my daughter out of harm's way. Not only did he do this, he healed her wound. I understand this is something that I myself was unable to grasp, yet it is the truth. So I ask you, my dear people, in honor of my daughter's rescuer, to allow him to dance with us. As your queen, I swear to you that neither him nor his people drain the life from others, but instead take away death. <clears throat> the queen's speech ended and she eagerly awaited her people's answer. The crowd was still for a moment. Then a clap was heard. And another. And another. Soon the castle was ringing with hips and hurrahs. Hip hip hooray! The, co <laughs> but the spring festival began and the royal mushroom pant <laughs> the spring festival began and the royal mushroom prance commenced ivy and belle gracefully twirled around with their arms interlocked with other mushrooms the mushroom people formed a large circle as they danced flowingly and stirred stirred up golden seeds from the ground the air was filled with sparkly gold, warmly, uh, I messed that sentence up. The air was filled with sparkly gold seeds, and the sun shimmered warmly upon the mushroom caps. It was not long after the dancing began that the beautiful and delicate sound of a wooden flute rang through the trees. The elven princess, dressed in pink silk and adorned with crystal jewels, stepped into the ring. She skipped and swirled in the middle of the circle as she played her entrancing tune. It was a sight Ivy and Belle would never forget. Their eyes glowed in amazement 
as they danced around the elf. For the first time in mushroom history, the death flower was no longer feared, but celebrated and welcomed by all of the kingdom, especially royalty. The end. All right, well, that's that. Thank you once again for joining me on Artsy Tales. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, like I said, I am going to try to limit stories like that that do touch upon anybody getting injured or talking about death or anything, but every once in a while, I think it's good to kind of let loose and unfilter myself, but I'll tr when I do do that, I'll try to keep it light. Um, what else? I don't think there's anything else for me to say. Oh, if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Share it with those who you think would enjoy artsy tales. If you or a friend have a short story you would like to like me to tell, you can email me to email me the story at salvationbridgeart at gmail.com that's salvationbridgeart at gmail.com um, stories do have to be short they have to have a conclusion and preferably as PG as possible um, and if I decide that I am able to tell your story on Artsy Tales I will give you the full credit by mentioning who the author is in both the description and the video, as well as drawing your characters from the story. So that's just a fun way for us all to be creative together and work our imaginative muscles. So yeah, um, I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their Sunday and know that you are loved. Thank you once again for joining me. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, I really would appreciate the support. I want to get more out there. I want to connect with new people, other artists, and just see where this goes. Anyway, thanks once again. Have a great day. Bye!